Hey guys, we're right here from Apotheca. Have you ever looked at your traffic reports in Google Analytics and wondered how those numbers are getting there? How's Google grouping those? Why do things look a little bit weird? We're gonna take a look at how those are grouped, what might be throwing them off, and how UTMs might affect those. All right, so let's dive into this report. So this is the uh, traffic acquisition report in the acquisition section of your analytics. And what I've done is isolated the unassigned grouping. So one of the things that throws people off is you'll often see this big spike in unassigned traffic. And the reason that is, is not because there's something wrong. It's because it takes 24 to 48 hours for Google's algorithm to really figure out what channels it wants to put different traffic and events into or where it wants to assign them. So Typically, if you're looking at live data or the most recent data, this is going to be a big spike for the last day. And then that will kind of go away. And you will actually see these numbers change over the course of 24 to 48 hours. It's super disconcerting for executives. It's super disconcerting for a lot of our clients. They don't understand why those numbers are changing, but they do change. And that is part of why is it just needs to figure those out. So if you see that spike in the last 24 hours, that's most likely what it is. Don't freak out. Likewise, if you see other channels that are not um, showing the usual uh, traffic, you know, because maybe they're a little bit lower because maybe some of this unassigned stuff is not being assigned correctly to those channels. So that's one thing to look for. Just look at your time frame. Um, you do have to be a little patient with GA4. It's like I said, super annoying, but um, it is what it is. You just need to be able to communicate that to your executives or clients. The other reason that um, you may see some oddities is if you look at unassigned, why is that unassigned, right? So. Sometimes that's just because, like I said, it's just recent numbers and they need to reassign that. Or it could be because of how Google is defining that unassigned group. So essentially, Google looks at a number of things in its documentation here. You can see this is how it will group traffic and events. And so it defines them by where it sees them coming from and then also what medium in the UTM is there. So um, for instance, for paid search, it's gonna look at matches of search sites. So it knows Bing, it knows other, uh, obviously Google ads um, are gonna be factored into that. And then it's also looking at where the medium matches and it's gonna need to contain uh, this wildcard for what is essentially CPC or CPM. Um, PPC, you know, so that's basically anything starting with CP and then another uh, letter, whether it says PPC, retargeting, paid, that type of thing. So it's going to look at that and say, okay, it's coming from Google ads and it has one of these mediums. So these are the source mediums in your reporting. So if you go back here, one of the things you can do is look for session if I could spell session source medium. And so that's what this is. So the first part is that source and the second is medium. And so on here, you can see the typical um, taxonomy for paid search would be Google CPC. Now that's how Google puts that in there when they're doing the integration between Google ads and Google GA4. Obviously you can do manual um, UTMs in, uh, in any of your programs. And we'll take a little bit closer look at that in a minute on how to do that correctly. Um, but Google prefers that um, taxonomy to that. Um, and then it's gonna know exactly where to bucket that. So you can see that it is bucking it, bucketing it in paid search correctly. Now, if you do have a lot of unassigned, one of the things that you can do is look for unassigned in here. And the only unassigned in this program is not set. Uh, we do have other clients where you'll see a whole list of unassigned that have other marketing programs in them that they just don't understand. So it could be maybe you have a campaign or a medium uh, or a source that's set to incorrectly to something 
Um, so instead of email, for instance, um, maybe you have the name of the email provider. So um, for instance, down here, they want to see email as part of the uh, source. So it should say email or a variation of email. And then the medium should be also be email or a variation of the email. And we've seen clients that'll put like WebChimp as the source or Clavio or uh, some other uh, email provider in their HubSpot, um, that type of thing, or the CRM. And if that's the case, Google doesn't know where to put it because it's not following the correct protocol. And so it's just going to put it as unassigned. So you'll be able to see it in the uh, report here under unassigned. Um, and you'll see that it's not getting categorized correctly. So, and again, like I said, we'll look at the URL builder here in a second to how you should be building those. Um, we will put a link to this in the description of this. So you can actually use this as a guide for how you should be structuring your URLs. Uh, we're also going to put together an easy to use spreadsheet that you can use where you can start keeping track of your campaign data. Uh, and it will help you build those, these URLs without using the tool that we're going to show you in a minute. Okay. And just real quickly, the other thing that you're going to see here sometimes is not set. And so not set just means that something happened that Google wasn't able to read any UTM data or understand where it was coming from. Sometimes it'll just throw it into direct. If it doesn't understand where the visitor is coming from, it just buckets it in direct. Sometimes it throws it into unassigned. Um, and that happens sometimes when, for instance, if there's a redirect on your site and Google doesn't understand where the people are coming from, it will bucket it in one of those channels. Um, because it may be the UTM got stripped off the URL when it redirected. That's a pretty common thing with certain site setups where it will strip that. The other is that if you have a slow loading page, a lot of times your analytics code won't get completely tracked or, or loaded before somebody does something. So in a situation like that, maybe you have a very slow moving website. You've went, a person has landed on it. They've already clicked or done some of their event, moved to a different page and the, the fire, the tag hasn't fired correctly. So it's not going to track them correctly for that landing. So when it, when they do go to another page, and it, if it does track them, it's not going to know where they came from. So it's going to see that as either direct or unassigned. Um, a lot of times direct because that UTM basically doesn't exist anymore. They went somewhere else and it didn't capture it and didn't set it for them to, to take credit for those programs. So one of the things you can do there is just keep a track of your page load speed. If you see this being a problem continually where things just don't seem like they're tracking correctly, that will be... Uh, a potential issue. We had a client that was seeing weird numbers for quite a while and they eventually figured out that where they had it set in their code was the analytics tag was firing way down the list of things that got fired on the site. So it would fire JavaScript and other third-party tools and that kind of stuff. And analytics is way down the list. So a lot of times it wasn't even really firing before people did other stuff and it was throwing their data off. Okay. All right. So say you are that's not the issue and that you're seeing some um, just hinky uh, things coming through in your reporting. Maybe you have a bunch of unassigned stuff that have um, programs in there that are correct or would should be correct. Or you have, say, something like um, a lot of credit being given to Facebook uh, organic when you know that you're running a Facebook or Instagram ad campaign but it's not showing up in your reporting. Well, that's because you're not showing building the UTM correctly. And so like we said, if you um, look at this, if you look at the um, organic and paid social, so it's gonna list a whole section of sites that are it knows are social sites, okay? And it's gonna do that for organic as well down here. It's gonna look at those social sites. If it doesn't see the correct medium, that says social or whatever, um, it's going to assume that it's organic. If it's, if you're paying for something, so if you're paying, have a paid social program and it doesn't say CPC or PPC or retargeting or paid, which you, most people think about those mediums as being for paid search, but it also applies to paid social. So if you have a Facebook program and you have 
for instance, the, the source as Facebook and then the medium as uh, ad, that's not going to register correctly in here. It's going to think that it's organic or some other program. It'll probably put it in organic. Okay. So keep in mind to check this when structuring that. One easy tool that we you can use to uh, make sure that your campaigns are tagged correctly is, um, and that you get the structure set up correctly, is this handy campaign URL builder. We'll put a link to this too in the description. Um, but essentially what you do is you put in your site, you can put in a campaign ID if there's a specific ID for your campaign. You can put in your campaign source. So again, going back to analytics, that is the first part of this. That's the source for the campaign. Okay. Uh, back here, uh, then the medium. And so that medium is what we just talked about. This has to be, for instance, if it was a Facebook campaign, it needs to say CPC or paid or one of those variations in here, retargeting paid PPC or CPC, um, for that to work correctly. And then your campaign name, can be whatever you want. That can be something that you have a taxonomy for within your company that's going to tell you what campaign that was for. Um, so um, when you do your campaign reporting, so if you go into analytics, you can actually look at campaigns, the session campaign. And that is however you choose to name them. So uh, they have this naming convention in here. This is the Google default uh, sample analytics. So they have their own naming convention. Uh, so they have, for instance, a PMAX campaign, they have uh, November. So they have the date, that kind of thing. So come up with a taxonomy that makes it easy for your marketing team to be able to understand where the campaign came from, uh, what it was, that kind of thing. Um, and then you can also have, um, this will show the campaign keywords. If you're doing it manually for a paid search program, <clears throat> you don't need that for like email or something like that. <clears throat> And then if you have multiple ads running in as part of a campaign, a given campaign, you can specify what those are. So for instance, if you have a Facebook campaign running and you have three or four different ad sets within that campaign that maybe have different types of contact, maybe one has a video, maybe one has a, a carousel, maybe one has a static image. You can define all of those in here for each ad type so that you can see the campaign as well as the content that was specific to that. Okay. Once you've entered all that, it puts it down here conveniently for you. You can shorten that link if it's going to be something that you want to run, uh, in social media or something like that, or you can just copy it. So let's take a look a little bit closer at what that looks like. So once that generates, it's going to have this string. So it's going to include your site. It's going to include UTM source, part of the source medium. In this case, it was Facebook that we entered. It's going to contain UTM medium. And then we put CPC in here. So make sure we do that so that uh, we know that it gets put in there and it doesn't go under um, the organic. And then the, the campaign, the UTM campaign. And in this case, we put cat videos because cat videos rock. Um, all right. So quickly, what is UTM? UTM is back before Google Analytics was Google Analytics. It used to be called Urchin. And so that's just an Urchin tracking uh, code that has stuck around for 20 plus years. So uh, <laughs> however long it used to be Urchin, uh, it was quite a while ago. Um, so before Google bought Urchin, that's this is still a leftover residual as part of that tracking. So if you ever wonder why it says UTM, that's why it's a UTM uh, tracking. And so, this has that taxonomy of what we talked about, source, medium, and then the campaign. And you can see that in here. So if we go here, we can break that down again into source medium. And you can see, uh, you know, being organic, uh, referral, all of that kind of stuff. So that's how you ensure that the campaigns that you're tracking are going to get you know, showed in here correctly. Um, there is another way that you can do that. So for instance, if you know that you're always going to be doing a lot of advertising with on, um, in something that is never going to fall into these, um, categories, right? So you see the categories in here is like direct 
cross network, paid search, paid social display, um, that type of thing, email affiliates, SMS. Um, but what's not in here is this, say if it's a standalone, um, publishing company or something that you're doing or a certain outlet that you're doing or something from TV or say you're tracking a QR code, right? Um, if you put a QR code on a billboard or a print piece or something like that, you can add, um, campaign information, the, the source medium and campaign to your QR code. We actually have a video about that. I talked about how doing that, about doing that in a little bit more detail. I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. But, um, if you, so you have that, you can call it print for instance, that's never going to fall into these categories. So, um, it's always going to be assigned to that, uh, unassigned section or say, you know, if, if you have a billboard or print, or maybe it's a partnership logo or something like that, the, uh, or partnership QR code or link or something from another site, that's just never going to fall under here. One of the things that you can do is build some custom, um, categories. And so you go to your channel groups and then you can see there's the default channel in here. You can copy that. I don't have admin access here, so I can't do it in the Google account, but you can copy the existing ones to create a new, uh, channel. And then you can actually define, define it in here. Um, so you can give it a group name description, um, and that type of group. And you can, so you can actually save that. So, uh, next time you go to your reporting under traffic and whatnot, if you go to acquisition, traffic acquisition, it'll be under here. Uh, instead of default channel group, you'll have the custom one that you've just created. Um, and so that way you can organize it. Uh, if you have a lot of those types of campaigns, um, that you would like to report on by default. The other thing to do obviously is just do reporting by source medium. That does get a little messy though. If you have a lot of campaigns and a lot of different sources for your, for your traffic. Um, again, this campaign builder, uh, can help you do this. One of the things that we highly recommend, like I said, we'll, uh, link to a spreadsheet that does this as well, where you can have your team fill out the various campaigns so that you can establish a taxonomy that is the same, both for your team, as well as any, um, agencies or third parties that are doing this for you. One of the things that we see all the time, for instance, is if you've had a couple different agencies come in, they're doing different types of campaigns. Maybe you have one that's doing email for you. One that's doing paid search, one that's doing affiliate, uh, whatever that is, they may be using different terms for all of the different programs. So we've seen clients, for instance, that'll have like a social media program, a paid, uh, social media that'll say, uh, paid paid FB, FB paid, uh, as the medium. And it's all sorts of different naming conventions in there. Some of which are not correct. They're not going to, um, show under the, uh, taxonomy that Google's defined. And obviously it just makes it more difficult if you are trying to sort things by source medium or understand, you know, you're in your reporting, what's happening. It's just too many variables to, that you're going to have to try to filter on and try to roll up. So establishing that taxonomy and sticking to it and making sure it's clear and everybody understands how it's built is going to help you, uh, in your reporting and it's going to help you in your data and it's going to make sure that everything is lining up correctly. So this is quick and easy, but it's a good way to understand your TMs in your reporting, a good way to build them and make sure that your reporting matches them. As always, if you have any questions, let us know if you need help with your marketing programs or with your analytics, we're always available. We have a link down below for a 30 minute free consultation. So hit us up for that. We'd love to talk to you. And as always, if we can help you with your marketing programs, we're interested in that too. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. We'll try to answer those as soon as we can. Thanks.